Welcome to the Living History Farm. My name is Dana Lackey and I'm out here at Roper Mountain Science Center and I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about what life was like in a log cabin. And the cabin that we're in, we're actually going to be in a separate one in just a minute too, this one was built around 1830 and the one that we're going to be heading into after this was built around 1790. And so this lesson is sort of centered around the early 1800s and what life would be like in a log cabin. Now specifically for you children, you would have a lot of chores to do. Well, if you lived in a cabin like this, you would have to start a fire in the morning and be able to cook your food. And boys would be responsible for chopping the wood. And so you would know how to use an ax like this. So this is an ax for chopping and splitting wood. There are other types of axes that you might have at your farm that you would use. This is called an adz. And this one, which looks kind of crazy, is called a broad axe. And that would be used for shaping logs, like for your log cabin. So different tools for different purposes. But certainly, boys, you would be using an axe to make sure that mom and your sisters had plenty of firewood to be able to start the fire and then to keep that going during the day. Now, speaking of starting a fire, while matches were around in the, say, 1830, 1840, you would probably have a tinder box at your house. So this is tinder. This is uh, just something that comes off of the flax plant, and it's just a kind of a trash fiber that lights very easily. And then you would use a flint which is a stone and a steel. This is a piece of metal that's been shaped so that I can hold it in my hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike the edge of this. And when I do, you should see a spark. And so to start a fire, you would hit the flint against the steel and it's actually chipping off a little bit of that stone. And you would try to catch those sparks down in your tender and then blow very carefully to get the fire started. And that takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of skill. Now, at our fire, it might be a little difficult to see, but I have some irons that are heating up by the fire. And as they warm up, then I can grab them with a hot pad and be able to iron. And so we we'll pick that hot one up and then take it over to the table and then, you know, you would iron your cloth with it, probably having a, another cloth on top to protect it from getting dirty. But you'd have multiple irons sitting in front of the fire, heating up, ready to go. Another thing that you might have in your house would be a toaster. Do you have a toaster at your house where you put bread in and you heat up one side? And once that one side gets heated on this type of toaster, we can turn it around and heat the other side. And then when it's done, we can put some butter on it. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. So that's an old fashioned toaster. And that's the handle. I can move it closer to the fire so it'll get nice and toasty. Um, this is a Dutch oven. And to be able to cook in a Dutch oven, you would need coals underneath. You need some heat underneath. And so, of course, I'm going to get that from the fire. So this fire is going pretty good over here. I'm going to move my toaster out of the way. And I'm going to reach under here with this shovel. I'm going to pull out some coals. Now, this is wood and this is stone here. So, of course, I'm going to put this on the stone. And then I would take my Dutch oven, which maybe would have a blueberry cobbler or something cooking in it and put that over it. We would also need to put coals on the top. And that is how you make a Dutch oven heat up. Now that's just a little bit. We would cover the whole top here with coals to be able to cook. All right, think about your oven. Think about your oven at home and what you have to do to get yours heated up. You just hit a knob and turn it up. Now, we mentioned that we wanted butter for our bread. So let's say we have some bread toasted and we want to make some butter. This is a type of butter churn right here and this is another type of butter churn right here. It's empty right now but we put cream down in it 
And this is the dasher. And the dasher moves up and down in the cream. Here's another shape dasher. So the dasher goes through the cream and it, it swashes it all around until all the fat in the cream comes together. And here is some butter that has been made in the butter churn. Now do you see the white in there? That's buttermilk. So we need to get all of that buttermilk out of there so it won't spoil. And so what I'm doing is I'm pressing it out. Put a little more salt in there to preserve it. And then I want to pour that out. Then we would take it and put it in a butter press and press it out on a plate to make a design. And the way you would do that is you put the butter down in there and you kind of mash it down in and then push it on the plate. And that makes a pretty design so that you can serve it to your guests and make a nice presentation. And that is how we make butter. All right, so let's head out here because we've made kind of a mess in here. So maybe we need to clean up. So I have out here some things that you might be responsible for um, taking care of to keep the house clean. So this is a wash bucket. And we have a washboard. And do you see these little metal ridges on here? That is so we can have some abrasion for getting these cloths clean or whatever clothing you're going to wash. And you just go up and down over that. You might not even have a washboard. You might have to use a rock out on the stream. But that would help you to get that clean. All right, so besides that, maybe you have to wash the dishes after you've made all that butter. And so I've got a wooden um, container here, this bucket. And this bucket has what we call staves. That's all those little pieces of wood that make up the bucket. And the person that makes these is called a cooper. All right, so he makes buckets and they typically have a metal band on them. And so you might come in here and scrub your dishes clean, but you don't have a sponge back then, not the kind of sponge that we think about in the grocery store today. You would have a loofah, all right? So that's what this is. And look at this example of loofahs right here. So the green one is a loofah that is fresh that we have just picked last week off of a vine. It's a type of gourd. And once they dry, they look like this. And then when you peel them, they look like this. And so what I mean by peeling them is you take, <coughs> excuse me, the dried skin off and inside is that sponge. And then we just cut that into pieces. And then when it goes bad and we've messed it up or whatever, we can throw that in the compost pile. So that's how you might wash your dishes out here. Now I said that that was a type of gourd. Here's some other kinds of gourds. So this one is a cannonball gourd and it's big and it has not been cleaned. Here is a smaller gourd and it has been cleaned. So you can see the difference. One of your jobs might be to scrub that and get that all clean. And you can imagine that we could cut these open clean them out. Um, some of you might be thinking that looks like a pumpkin and gourds and squash and pumpkins they're all in the same family and so like a pumpkin when you clean it out you've got to get the seeds and the fiber out and so you can take that lid and make a little hinge on it and be able to store things. Look at this. That's another type of gourd. Okay, So this one we cut open, cleaned it out, and it makes a scoop. So let's say I needed a scoop of water. Maybe you even wanted to drink it. Then you can scoop it with that gourd. They're very handy. All right, everyone, let's look in here and see what we see in this cabin. Children, you would be helping with cleaning the house. This is a corn husk mop. It has, I'm sorry, that's a little loud. It has corn husks that go right through the holes down to the bottom. That's how you scrub your floor. So if you had corn one night, you know, you shuck the corn, you take those outer leaves off and you would save them to make your corn husk mop. This is a broom. Um, this shape is a little bit different. It's kind of um, 
thin and pointed. This is a cobweber, and it's made from broom corn. It's related to corn, but it's a little bit different, and that's the straw part. You would grow that in your garden and be able to weave that. So again, providing for your family's needs. Not to mention food. So boys, maybe you uh, don't have a, a gun to go hunt with. Maybe you don't even have a bow and arrow, but you make a trap. And so this type of trap, the idea is that you would have a much longer string than what we have and hide this in a good place outside put something in there to attract an animal and then when the animal comes up you pull the stick out and it catches them you have to be pretty quick right here I have some beeswax and what do you think we would use this for so this would be used for all kinds of things around the house including candles and I've got some candles that were dipped in beeswax and you would take a pot kind of like this have your wax in there and heat it up. Now this is not beeswax in here. This is actually tallow, another way that you can make candles. And so once it gets heated, it's liquid, but at room temperature, it's solid. And the idea is you would have it over the fire, dip this down into the hot wax over and over and over again, and then eventually you would build up enough to have some candles. So we have some candles burning in the other room. And honestly, that's quite a few candles um, to have burning. And you really don't need candles in the daylight. Um, your family would conserve those for evening. So we've talked about a lot of different chores. What about some things to play with? So you might have some toys like you would see on this shelf. Um, this is a Jacob's Ladder that's made from little bits of wood and ribbon and that's something that you could make yourself if you knew how to do that ribbon correctly. Um, they're corn husk dolls and all kinds of things. This one is called a wimmy diddle and a wimmy diddle is kind of like an old tiny magic trick and you'd have somebody say come G and that would make the propeller on the end spin one way and then, let's see if we can get it going again. There it goes. And then somebody would say, come haul. And then it goes the other way. So how do you think I'm making that reverse? Come G, come haul. And there it goes. So it's a magic trick from a long time ago. All right, everyone, I appreciate you coming along on this little journey through the cabins. As you think about what we've talked about today, I want you to compare how you live today and what life was like in a log cabin. Are some of these chores similar to what you have to do today? Are some of them very different? All right, I hope we see you soon out here at Roper Mountain Science Center. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye.